On December 31, 2019, the World Health Organization's China office heard the first reports of a previously unknown virus behind a number of pneumonia cases in Wuhan, eastern China. As of March 23, 2020, there have been 353,681 confirmed cases across the world. 15,418 have sadly died from the disease, and 100,619 have successfully recovered. The disease has been detected in more than 150 countries, with Italy, the US and Spain experiencing the most widespread outbreaks outside of China. In the UK, there have been over 5,683 confirmed cases and 281 deaths. This is the COVID-19 pandemic. Wuhan Market, China This market has been a topic of outrage from the rest of the world for quite some time. Not just for the barbaric animal cruelty that occurs at this market, but also for the health and hygiene issues which seem to be completely irrelevant to the storekeepers and their customers. Many wild animals are traded illegally here, including, bats, snakes, birds and rodents. The virus is known to jump from animals to humans, and Wuhan Market is thought to be where the virus originally started, as stallholders from Wuhan Market, were amongst the very first people to be infected with the virus. Although an initial analysis of the virus suggested it was similar to viruses seen in snakes, a team of biologists at the Wuhan Institute for Virology released a detailed paper showing that the genetic makeup is 96% identical to that of the coronavirus found in bats. The Wuhan market was shut down on January 1. But by then it appears that the coronavirus had already started to spread throughout Wuhan. On January 31, the central government of China imposed a lockdown in Wuhan and other cities in the Hubei province in an effort to quarantine the center of the outbreak. Transport into and out of the city was closed, shops were shut except for those seeking food or medicine. Private vehicles were barred from the roads without special permission and most public transport was cancelled. But it wasn't enough to stop the disease from escaping to the rest of the world. Just three months later, the disease has spread rapidly throughout the world and is still spreading. So why is the coronavirus spreading at such an alarming rate? Well, the incubation period for COVID-19 is between 2 to 14 days, meaning many people are traveling and spreading the virus before even knowing they are infected. In an era where travel has never been easier, it's no surprise that it has managed to reach so many corners of the globe. Coronavirus is also extremely contagious. It can spread via small droplets from the infected person through coughing, sneezing and even exhaling near another person. These droplets also land on surfaces, and others can easily pick the virus up by touching these surfaces, then touching their eyes, nose or mouth. So what are the symptoms of the coronavirus? The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, tiredness, and a dry cough. Some patients may experience aches and pains, nasal congestion, a runny nose, sore throat and diarrhea. Around 80% of people who contract the virus, will recover without needing any special treatment. However, Around 1 in 6 people will become seriously ill and develop difficulty breathing. Older people, and those with underlying health issues are more likely to develop a serious illness. But there are things we can do to help protect ourselves and others from becoming seriously ill, aside from government-recommended social distancing, and washing hands frequently whenever touching anything that other people have used, drink plenty of hot drinks. The virus struggles in temperatures higher than 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so consuming plenty of hot drinks, may help to raise the body temperature high enough to kill off some of the virus. Avoid taking ibuprofen, as this can lower the body's temperature and allow the virus to thrive. Drink plenty of water. 
germs which have made their way into your mouth and throat can be flushed down into the stomach by sipping water throughout the day. Once in the stomach, the stomach acid will destroy the bacteria instead of letting it multiply in your throat and making their way to your lungs. Gargle with disinfectants such as TCP, mouthwash or salt water. Again, killing off bacteria in the throat will help to reduce the chances of bacteria getting to a dangerous level. Disinfect things around the home. Phone screens, door handles, car doors, steering wheels, hand brakes and gear sticks. Experts suggest testing for infection every morning by taking a deep breath and holding it for at least 10 seconds. If this can be done without coughing or difficulty, it shows that there is no fibrosis in the lungs, indicating the absence of infection. As of March 24, 2020, in an effort to control the spread of the virus, the Prime Minister has banned all forms of social interaction in the United Kingdom, due to many citizens breaking rules and gathering together in large groups. People are no longer permitted to leave their homes for any reasons other than, buying essential food, medicine or essential work such as, nursing, doctors, food retailers or chemists. Good evening. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. All over the world we're seeing the devastating impact of this invisible killer. And so, tonight, I want to update you on the latest steps we're taking to fight the disease and what you can do to help. And I want to begin by reminding you why the UK has been taking the approach that we have. Without a huge national effort to halt the growth of this virus, there will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope because there won't be enough ventilators, enough intensive care beds, enough doctors and nurses. And as we've seen elsewhere in other countries that also have fantastic healthcare systems, that is the moment of real danger. To put it simply, if too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to handle it, meaning more people are likely to die, not just from coronavirus, but from other illnesses as well. So it's vital to slow the spread of the disease, because that is the way we reduce the number of people needing hospital treatment at any one time, so we can protect the NHS's ability to cope and save more lives. And that's why we've been asking people to stay at home during this pandemic. And though huge numbers are complying, and I thank you all, the time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households, that is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day, for example, a run, walk or cycle, alone or with members of your household, any medical need to provide care or to help a vulnerable person, and travelling to and from work, but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. That's all. These are the only reasons you should leave your home. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. And use food delivery services where you can. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them, including through fines and dispersing gatherings. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people 
in public, excluding people you live with, and will stop all social events, including weddings, baptisms, and other ceremonies, but excluding funerals. Parks will remain open for exercise, but gatherings will be dispersed. No Prime Minister wants to enact measures like this. I know the damage that this disruption is doing and will do to people's lives, to their businesses and to their jobs. And that's why we've produced a huge and unprecedented programme of support, both for workers and for business. And I can assure you that we will keep these restrictions under constant review. We will look again in three weeks and relax them if the evidence shows we are able to. But at present, there are just no easy options. The way ahead is hard, and it is still true that many lives will sadly be lost. And yet it is also true that there is a clear way through. Day by day, we are strengthening our amazing NHS with 7,500 former clinicians now coming back to the service. With the time you buy, by simply staying at home, we are increasing our stocks of equipment. We are accelerating our search for treatments. We're pioneering work on a vaccine. And we are buying millions of testing kits that will enable us to turn the tide on this invisible killer. I want to thank everyone who is working flat out to beat the virus. Everyone from the supermarket staff to the transport workers to the carers to the nurses and doctors on the front line. But in this fight, we can be in no doubt that each and every one of us is directly enlisted. Each and every one of us is now obliged to join together, to halt the spread of this disease, to protect our NHS and to save many, many thousands of of lives. And I know that as they have in the past, so many times, the people of this country will rise to that challenge and we will come through it stronger than ever. We will beat the coronavirus and we will beat it together. And therefore, I urge you at this moment of national emergency to stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. Thank you.